Okay, so what we're going to do is be able to make uh, a bucket with some water with this. So I'm going to make a shape like this and grab this inside part and hold down shift while I'm scaling and then hold shift while I'm scaling to be able to put that on the inside and I have a bucket. Now to refine that, remember that we can just go into our modeling toolkit and hit bevel. And now we have just a little bit of a lip on the edges of this. So, all right, let's say I want some water in here. What I can do is create right here, a polygon disc. And if I put that in here, scale this up and I'm going to put this into, uh, let's just look at what I've got for the shape. Okay, so I have my subdivisions. I can just increase that just a little bit. So I'm putting it at about four. And now I'm gonna go into my deform. And I'm gonna put a nonlinear, let's say, a sign. So this sign right here, if I change my amplitude on that, you'll notice that it's starting to look like this. It's not actually impacting it because it needs to be rotated. So what I'm going to do, rotate, whoop. let's say we have, okay, so that's fine, My sign handle, and rotate, so, all right, now this looks weird, so, it's because I've rotated my sign handle, so it should. Shading x-ray. It's following this curve. So I'm gonna reduce my amplitude on that. What this is doing for me, turn that x-ray off is allowing for this to kind of look like it's sloshing around in a bucket. Now, your amplitude is what's driving that. So let's say that this thing, this is just the same way we had Tom Cruise in the minecart. We got to think about things parented to other things. So this is going to be parented to your mesh for the water, and then that will be parented to your bucket. So now if I move the bucket, let's say I start over here, and then I go frame 15, I'm going to go over here. And then frame 30, I'm going to go back to the other side. So now it's doing that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start with this sign with the amplitude of 0. And my wavelength will put it 0. So let's set a key for these two. Now, whoop, make sure 0 set key. Set key, wavelength was 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.1 or 0 0.001, 0, 0, that's fine. I'm going to go over to the other side. And remember, if this is overlapping animation, um, this is the primary, that's secondary. It would actually continue a little bit further than that. So maybe be around 18. Oh my god. You don't want that. And maybe the amplitude would be up at about this height. So we'll key that and we'll key this one. Now I can also move this down. I should probably have that down. So this starts at nothing and as it moves it's over on this side and then we'll move it back to the other side and we'll go beyond 30 and we will move it in the opposite direction. So we don't need to go a lot, just a little bit. And let's see what we got here. So if we play with these settings on here, we can start to get, so we have our offset. So this is how we can get waves to continue. We have our drop off. So maybe it's too high. We can reduce or increase that drop off. And that's our bounds would be how far that is. Just like our, our bend 
we have our high bound and our low bound on that. So this is a cool way that we can get just a little bit of like water that is sloshing around in a bucket. So very easy, cheesy way to do that in case if you have bucket, a oh, bucket. So speaking of buckets, let's take the water out of here and let's talk about how we can get a pulley. So I'm going to just make a real quick torus and uh, 0 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Let's pretend this looks like an amazing handle for a bucket. Whoa. 0 0.05. There we go. All right. So I'm going to take that thing and delete it. And let's say that we need this to move up and down. Well, right now our bucket is moving here for our rotation. So if I hit the D key and move that up, when I rotate that, it moves here, which is good. With this part though, our rotation is right here. So let's change that to where this point is. So I'm gonna hit the D key on this one and move that. I'm gonna go into my front view so I can make sure I'm in that point. Right around here. Now if I rotate, it looks like it's swinging. So I have a bucket. I have this piece, which is the handle. And I have this piece, which is the bucket, which that was where I definitely want that to be. So I'm gonna key that so I don't have to deal with these things moving around, ignore the chaos that you see, okay. This is back to where it needs to be. All right, so we have bucket. Now that I have this, I can animate this piece, which is gonna move that around, and I can animate this piece. But if I want them all to be one piece, I'm gonna grab this child and select the parent and parent it. And now I can move this thing. And if this moves, then I can move this piece and swing that around. So this is very simple rigging that we can do by parenting. It's the same thing with the Tom Cruise in the minecart. So we can parent one object to be another by hitting the P and it all is driven by our um, pivot points and that's by hitting the D key and changing where that is going to go. Now that I have that, let's make, um, I'm gonna make this thing. And I'm gonna make another one of these. And that's going to be my rope. And I'm going to make this thing. And all I'm going to do is select these, scale this, and I'm going to scale and scale again. So I have kind of this look of a pulley right here. Now depending on how your camera is looking at this, um, if you're looking at it from head on, it's going to look fine. We can also put a torus of the same, um, the same thickness inside there to represent rope like right in here. So let's say that we have that as a 0 0.05 and that was going to be sort of connecting in there. So um, I'm going to delete these. You can kind of get that idea of these shapes fitting inside of here. So that'll, that'll look like a rope. So it's actually easier. Let's get rid of that one and we'll just extrude this down. So I'm going to take, yeah, we'll leave that for now. All right. So it's sort of that, it's we're faking a rope going around. And I'm gonna make another rope on the other side. And I'm gonna move my pivot point to up on both of these. So I'm gonna make sure they're at the same spot. Okay. 
Okay. So why did I do that? Because now, if I take this one and scale, it looks like it's going up and down. So if I scale that, let's say at frame 1, it's here. And at frame 20, it'll be half of that. So we'll go to point, yeah, so point three three. And on this side, it's going to start to be that. We'll, we'll uh, key this, and then we'll make it go to the opposite at 20. So what this is doing for me is a faked pulley system, when all I'm doing is scaling two different pieces. And so if this, is, if this side is 0.33, that means that this side is the opposite of where that end result's going to be. So now that I have that, I'm going to um, parent my bucket handle to this little knob thing. And then what I'm going to do now is, let's say, point on poly. So what this is going to do for me is allow me to constrain um, this bucket to the point that I'm going to select. So first I'm going to select the points. I want these vertices. Then I want the bucket. I'm going to maintain the offset and hit apply. Hopefully, okay. It's just animating with it. So how did this happen? Let me back this train up. I have these things moving around, which I know it's super dramatic, right? It's moving like a foot, big deal. But what's cool about this is I can now take, so I'll take this beginning part. I have this. So the bucket's connected to the bucket handle. The bucket handle's connected to this little nub thing. And then this nub thing is now going to be um, connected to this. So to do that, you select the rope first, select the vertice, select the bucket nub, and then constrain point on poly, open up the options box, and then make sure that maintain offset is on, hit apply, and then now you don't need to animate that bucket doing anything um, for going up and down, it's following that. So you've just made yourself a lot of extra time. Now that extra time should be in, let's take this so when it goes from here to there, let's say it starts to swing a little bit. And then we can take this too and overlapping animation and secondary. If that handle goes first, it's going to kind of start to now I'm just winging this, but you kind of get the idea of it's starting to, to wiggle when it's done. So this moves, and you get that. I would definitely change how over the top I just did that. But um, fun fact about animation, we're faking this stuff. We're, mag we're magicians. So um, I was almost going to say musicians. That's a little different. Um, if these were the same thickness, so if I scale that up a little bit more, if you don't zoom in on this to show people your trick, who cares? Also, if this thing was a little bit more detailed, so if I select my faces on this, or I actually took the time to make a really nice um, pulley, and I hit extrude, I'm going to turn off, keep faces together, and maybe it has, I, I would do a lot better than this. I just wanted to show you guys. Like maybe you have something like that now. Um, we'll start with the animation here, and then as that's moving up at to uh, frame twenty, we'll rotate this. 
So now you're giving people that idea of motion when there's not really any technical thing going on in here in the sense that this, this isn't actually moving a rope. It's just this fake piece right here. So for a Rube Goldberg machine or something that's you know, really quickly moving around, that's a pretty fast way to be able to do that.